Aaron, as the playoffs begin, how driven are you to win a world championship? <laughs> I'm, you know, this is, you know, I'm, ex I'm excited, that's for sure. Um, you know, definitely driven just like everybody else in this room. You know, had quite a few opportunities the past couple of years to, you know, go out there and win a, win a World Series, and we've come up short. So I think every single one of those times that we've, you know, kind of fallen on our face has been a, you know, definitely a learning experience for me and a lot of guys in this room. And we're just excited to get back out there and, you know, hunt it down this year. You know, I'm also excited that we got quite a few guys that this is their, you know, first time getting into the postseason and getting a chance to play some meaningful games. So this is, it's, it's an exciting time and a lot of buzz in that, in that clubhouse right now. So we're just ready to get rolling for tomorrow. I'll go to the second row. Aaron, while you were chasing history, it felt like the expectation was every at bat, people had their phones out and they wanted to see a home run. Is there a part of you that's relieved that is no longer the expectation? Well, I, I like I like having everybody on their feet. You know, I love you know hearing the stadium kind of go crazy when you're when you're walking up to the plate. I, I'm just I'm relieved that it's over with, so that we can kind of go back to focusing on you know playing a game and winning a ball game. You know, it was a little a little strange there for a while. Um, you know, every time you step up to the plate, people are expecting you to hit a home run, and you know every time I step up there, I'm trying to you know do what I can to help the team win. So it was a kind of a, a weird situation there, but you know happy I could do it and kind of share that moment with my teammates and family and you know now it's back to you know playing baseball and it's we're going to still have those same you know same feelings those same jitters with the crowd on their feet especially at Yankee Stadium these next two games it's going to be you know a packed house so I think those past couple of weeks of kind of going through that and having the, and having this whole team kind of be there and, and witness that whole situation I think it kind of prepared us for what's to come here in the postseason a couple in the third row I think hey, Aaron you were walked intentionally walked 19 times this year past errors maybe a guy like Barry Bonds you grew up watching sees more intentional walks were you surprised with the home runs in the season that you had that you weren't intentionally walked as much as you were and do you think maybe that changes with a shorter series where at every at bat so crucial you know I think I think a lot of teams understand how tough it is to hit <laughs> you know it especially with the major league pitching that we have in you know this day and era of I feel like every single starter is throwing 95 plus every guy in the bullpen is throwing 100 um it, it's still tough to square up the baseball and you know go up there and try to do something productive so I think you know a lot of teams you know throughout the year just kind of said hey we're gonna we're gonna go after him and see what happens or you know we'll be a little careful with him and if he swings out of the zone he swings out of the zone if he doesn't he'll take his walk so you know I didn't expect to walk anymore expect to walk any less but in, in the in this in the postseason I expect you know teams just to they'll have scouting reports they'll do what they need to do there'll be certain situations where they come after me or other guys there'll be certain situations where they you know pitch around me or other guys just to get you know the right matchup so um you know, if, if they're going to walk me and put me on base you know I'm, <laughs> I'm happy for it because I know we got a stack lineup behind me of guys that are you know waiting to drive me in thanks yep. stay in the third row and then Eric You guys have advanced far in the postseason during your time here. What what makes you confident that this year could be different to get over the hump and, and win a title? Well, I feel like in years years past, we've just kind of lacked, you know, having some of the, you know, top end starting rotation pitching. And I feel like you know a couple of years ago we went out and got Garrett Cole. You know, watching what Nestor Cortez has developed into these past couple of years. You know, getting Severino back healthy and you know, we saw what he did his last start in Texas. It's it's uh it's impressive. I can go on and on about our, our starting pitching and then, you know, hand it off to our bullpen, it makes for a short game. So I think, you know, besides what our offense is capable of doing every single night, which we showcased all year long, I think when it comes down to it, it's defense and, and starting pitching that's gonna win you games in October and you know, it's something that we definitely specialize in and you know, we got some we got some dogs out there on the mound that are ready to show what they can do. Uh, Eric in the first row on your right. Aaron, for players who have not experienced it, how would you describe to them what Yankee Stadium is like for a playoff game? Man, it's it's heaven. That's <laughs> that's that's where you want to be. You know, it's you know, for me, I just for me, I get the jitters. You know, 
the intros, you know, running out on that line, the crowd cheering, the little crisp, cool air. It's there's nothing like it. You, you can't hear the roll call. Even when I'm in right field, right next to the bleacher creatures, I can barely hear what they're what they're saying out there. It's so loud, and you know. But when it comes down to it, you just and and you got to embrace it and enjoy every single moment, you know, because that's you know we're still playing the same kids game that we've been playing all year. Still going to go out there and do the same thing we've done for 162 games. So. You know, for the guys that haven't been there, or, you know, experienced it, it's a hey, soak it in, you know, realize and acknowledge that you are going to be a little nervous. You are going to be have some butterflies in your stomach. But, you know, if you prepared the right way, did what you need to do pregame. And now it's time to go out there and embrace those moments and have fun with it and and just play ball. Uh, Brian in the second row in your left. Yeah, along, along those lines, Aaron, uh, the atmosphere here has been a little weird and, you know, everybody <laughs> focused on your at bats only. What are you hoping it looks, feels, and sounds like tomorrow? Just like all the other postseason games we've had here, just loud. Uh, fans on their feet from the very first pitch, so the last out. Constant noise, you know, and I, I think the fans, are they're going to show out in numbers, you know, just based on what we did all year, you know, staying in first place, winning our division, you know, not winning a World Series for quite a few years. I think I think the fans are hungry just like we are for, for a championship, so – you know they're they're a big part of this this whole thing for us. They're out there battling with us every single pitch, and when they bring the energy, us as players, we we feel that and we feed off of it. So we're just all looking forward to you know putting on a good show for them in this in this postseason. We'll stay over here with Ron. A lot of times we see before and at bat, especially when the other team's in the bullpen, you reviewing things on the iPad. What are you looking to pick up? The release point, the ball spins out in that like minute or two what knowledge do you get well you you write down we got n different notes that, that we take that we can put on put on those ipads like personal notes of mine and even just a refresher of what you know i just got done seeing you know i don't know how many pitches from the starter or they're bringing in a high leverage guy I, i've been doing all my homework the night before and that day it's it never hurts to get another another set of eyes on you know what, what's his fastball doing what's his breaking ball doing and and then it's just go out there and stick to your plan and, and go have fun. So I, I don't try to look at too much. Just just a quick refresher on what's it, what this guy has and then go out there, make a plan, and go to work. Do a couple more, uh, Barry and then John on your right. Yeah. Uh, so just a note on the intentional walks. I mean, Barry was walked 120 times in 2004 alone and 688 times in his career, and he still hit 762 home runs. So. It was pretty minor with you, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. I never said it. I never said it was a lot. You know, it's. Uh, I'm still getting over 600 plate appearances. So um, that's one one joke. My my dad always said. He's like, man, you're you're getting up to the plate about 600, 500 times. You tell me you can't hit 80 out. <laughs> uh, but um, he has. We have fun with that. But um, no, Barry Barry was a different animal, man. He's he he would get maybe one pitch a series and drive it out. One pitch a game. It, it was impressive and definitely fun to watch as a kid. So I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad I didn't get a walk to 100, and, 100 and something times. That would have been a little wild. So if Barry said you guys have never met. No. Okay. What would as a when you meet him, and I'm sure you will, will you approach it as a kid, like to his idol or to a peer? Oh, well, definitely as an idol, you know, I got respect for the guys that came before me and, and played this game before me and everything they've done. So I definitely see it as, you know, approaching an idol and I pick his brain a little bit and, you know, just any tips I could get on, you know, how he made this game look so easy. It could be even, you know, defensive stuff because the amount of gold gloves he's won, he's won out there and in left field. So, um, you know, whenever I get a chance to meet him, I'll definitely will have a lengthy conversation. That's for sure. Christy in the third row on your left. You've talked about before um, not having success in the postseason and how that's kind of driven you a little bit. Is there one thing that you take away from that, a feeling or a memory? And when do you think about it? How do you use that? <laughs> well, the worst feeling in sports besides, you know, having to walk off that field, you know, either getting walked off or losing the game is coming back into the clubhouse and just having that, <laughs> that silence like you know you don't know what to say you don't know 
what to do. It's like I, we just we've been I've been working my butt off since you know the November of the year before to get to this spot, and also now you're telling me it's over with. I got to go home, <laughs> you know. So it's just that feeling of you know shoulda coulda woulda. You're thinking back. Well, if I would have done this, if I could have done that, we would have been in a better spot. You know, feeling like you let down your teammates, feeling like you let down the city, your team. You know, just a bunch of different emotions after a loss in the postseason. So. You know, that's one thing I always, you know, I said it last year to the guys in Fenway. It's, you know, as we're all kind of sitting there in silence looking at each other and nobody knows what to say. It's like, hey, guys, don't don't forget this feeling. You know, when you're working out this off season and it's too early or you're too tired, think about <laughs> think about this feeling right here and, you know, how sick you feel, you know, how upset you are, how mad you are, you know, and use that, you know, to get you out of bed or you know, even when it's July and August, the dog days, and you don't – Feel like doing that workout, you don't feel like really locking it in for this last your fifth that bad of the game. You know, think about, you know, walking off that field and seeing other teams celebrate. You know, just it's little things like that to just kinda push put it motivates me and pushes me every single day. So I think it's it's definitely that silence in the in the clubhouse. We'll do three last ones, John on your right. Aaron, obviously, even after the team was able to clinch the postseason spot and everything like that, Aaron was able to kind of move guys in and out of the lineup a little bit, but not so much with you. You were carrying a lot there. Were you able in the last couple of days to refresh yourself or like reset in a sense or to, to get out of that mode where you were in last Tuesday? Yeah, I think I think when I was kind of fighting Skip about the last game, I kind of wanted to get in there, but he said, nah, take the day. And I, I really just needed that one day and I was, I was ready to go right after that. But we've had five days off now to kind of, you know, for me, I can come in here and, you know, knock out my cage routine, do what I need to do on defense, you know, different recovery stuff I need to do and, you know, go back home, recover, watch some film, and just get ready for the next day. So these past couple of days have definitely been big time for me to, you know, just get my body right for the for this uh, stretch we're about to go on. We'll stay in that same road to the right. Uh, first of all, congratulations. 62 don't happen. It's <laughs> a lot of time. Uh, when you look back five years ago, right now, and then be with Cleveland, mostly all the time, when the Junks face the Cleveland postseason, they dominate. What you expect to happen in this series? Well, first off, thank you. Uh, and it, it's gonna it's gonna be a tough series. You know, we've battled these guys. You know, earlier in the year at our place, and then we went to them a little bit later in the year. And it was, it was a dog fight back and forth. You know, they got a young team that, you know, they got a lot of young fast players offensively that. You know, work a great at bat. Um, they cause havoc on the base pass, that's for sure. You got to be on your toes defensively because if you bobble the ball for one second, they're going to beat the, you know, beat those plays out. And then even their pitching staff, you know, up and down, you got a lot of guys that, you know, know how to pitch. Uh, they're hungry. They got a lot of fight. You know, just from the past couple of games of watching them play uh, the Rays, they, you know, they're never out of that game, even when they got down early um, in game one. You know, Ramirez responds with a two run homer to, give them the lead and they hold on to it by handing it off to their good bullpen. It's uh, it's pretty impressive. So I'm looking forward to this to this matchup. You know, like, like you said, last time we faced them in 2020 and, and 2017, um, you know, kind of coming in there at the underdog. And, you know, we're, we're going to try to keep that same mindset of, you know, we got to go out there and prove ourselves every day. We'll finish up with Bob against the wall on your right. Hey, Aaron, you were just talking about this, that awful silence in the clubhouse and that, that sick feeling walking in after an elimination loss. What does it feel like after the sixth or seventh year of that? And because of, you are the centerpiece of this offense, do you feel uh, a greater responsibility to not let that happen again? Well, I feel a responsibility every single year, even when I was a rookie, you know, coming in here and going in on my first postseason run in 17, you know, I felt responsibility, you know, not only for this team, but the city to go out there and, and bring something home and you know as the years have gone on and we've you know fallen short and came close and fallen short and you know it's it doesn't get any better every year you know and you know that's why you got to learn from all those experiences you got to learn from those downfalls you got to learn from the you know the sleepless nights and you got to take what you can from it turn it into a positive and just get ready for the next year and that's what I've tried to do every single season and you know, this year we put ourselves in a great position we got a great team to to go out there and kind of kind of close this thing out. So, um, you know, as much as I hate those 
those silent moments, you know, they only make you, you know, not only a better, you know, better player, but a better person, you know, when you go through the adversity like that. I, th I think you know my prediction. 